Welcome to a noob's guide to Nakari. This is Nakari, nine feet of rippling demonic muscles and crab claws. A greater demon of Slanesh, so vile and depraved that you'd have to watch this video like a scrambled 90s adult cable channel if we included all Nakari's nonsense. That was a nipple. You saw it. You saw it. There is no bass riff funky enough to express the level of sensuality that we are dealing with here. So before I even started to make this video about who Nakari is and how that lore has been translated to gameplay in Total War Warhammer 3, I put up a poll asking which version of this video you wanted. Which, by the way, if you missed... And here's the results. Congratulations, you all just got slanashed. For the earthly pleasure of humor, you damned all your browser histories, and also made them admissible in a court of law. Nakari is what happens when a crustacean dances with the devil in the pale moonlight, a demon that feeds on the sin and excess of mortals by manipulating them into pursuing ever more perverse actions. Nakari's beady black eyes contain all the secrets of pleasure and pain, while a serpent's tongue writhes behind razor-sharp teeth, tasting the air for perverse energy. A scent like a combination of KY jelly, leather, and Axe body spray. Nakari is an androgynous, demonic being that is awful to behold and yet impossible to look away from. When the Polar Gates fell and Chaos penetrated the world, Slanesh, the Chaos God of Temptation, sent down her star demon, responsible for 80s hair bands, toga parties, and Wilt Chamberlain. Because at the end of the day, the god of can you keep it in your pants favors servants who wear chaps so assless they belong in a Tampa Bay strip club. But modern followers of Slanesh aren't just about sexual pleasure. They revel in all forms of moral corruption and hedonism. Pain, greed, lust, excess, jealousy. If it's a strong enough emotion, it can be used to twist an individual to do unspeakable acts in its pursuit. I mean, would you really kill for a good cup of coffee? How bad do you want that promotion? And of course the classic, what would you do for a million dollars? Inquiring Slaneshi minds want to know. So Nakari put on goodbye horses and got to work, making his way downtown to the elf home of Uthawad determined to circle their rim and make a job of licking that donut for all it was worth, and nobody could stop him. All Keepers of Secrets, the greater demons of Slanesh, are terrifying in combat and delight in the exquisite pain they can cause with their fluid grace. But Nakari moves like a ballet dancer. Each plie ends in a precision thrust. Every sensuous adage becomes a rib-crushing embrace, and a casual pirouette is enough to send 25 foot of intestines streaming out like a ribbon dancer of doom. Still, there's something hilarious about watching him from Powerpuff Girls disembowel people. But Nakari is more than just a butterface with a winning backside. They also have access to spells from the lore of Slanesh to help dominate any foes. And a unique weapon, Wit Stealer, that's guaranteed to blow your mind. As Slanesh's chosen general, you'll be fielding armies drawn only from the finest pleasure dens, so don't expect high armor stats or longevity, and instead concentrate on getting close to enemies as fast as possible so you can pound them into submission. Slanesh also has a notable lack of ranged units for a group that's all about skeeting from a distance, preferring a rolling circus of bondage gear and whips straight out of Mad Max, riding atop chariots that are barbed for no one's pleasure. So you can see why the elves were understandably desperate to rid themselves of this case of chaos crabs. They tried shaving, and when that didn't work, their bravest warrior, Anarion, offered himself as a sacrifice to the elf creator god if they would only intervene and save his people. Anarion didn't get an answer, but a promise was a promise, so he walked right into that sacrificial pyre. Anarion went extra crispy on the way through, but he emerged fully healed and 23 spices more powerful and ready to kick Nakari back into the Chaos Realms for a hundred years. But like most STDs, they came back again. Nakari was sent to fight alongside champions of all four Chaos Gods to try and stop an Arion from sucking off the world. Z magic. That job was already taken, and Nakari didn't wear out those pants laying pipe. Well, not as a plumber anyway. 
Nakari managed to put the squeeze on Anarion with his claws, but as he was impervious to pain, Nakari didn't get the reaction he was looking for. Instead, the elf plunged his sword into the Keeper of Secrets' chest and then crushed his black heart with his bare hands. <laughs> Nakari then spent the next millennia imprisoned inside the Vortex, probing it for gaps and holes as only he could, drawing power from its dark places until the time was right and the elf's proverbial pants were down. And then, engorged with magic, Nakari broke free. Colonel, you better take a look at this radar. What is it, son? I don't know, sir. But it looks like a giant dick. Yeah. Take a look out of starboard. Oh my god, it looks like a huge... No, Bangaroo. This is what makes a tree. Does anyone see a length of long, hard... Wood, darling, I need yours. Please, back to bed. Not now. I see an omen. A large, veiny. Shaft, it must go deeper. Ungi's beard. Check the size of that. Wang, pay attention. I was distracted by that enormous flying... Dark, the need is free. Cool. That's even bigger than mine. Since then, besting the last of Anarion's bloodline has become something of an obsession for Nakari. That's why at the start of Warhammer 3's Immortal Empires campaign, Nakari has rematerialized back in Ulthuan with new tricks. The end goal of Seleneshi corruption shouldn't always be a pan-species orgy. I mean, they're still gonna happen, but like getting skinny from tapeworms, it's just a welcome side effect. Nakari now wants to get everyone in the world on the Slaneshi party bus and become the head of a clandestine network of smut that reaches across the globe. Except in Warhammer. As that corruption spreads across the globe, you'll be allowed to manifest Slaanesh's unholy will on the mortal plane with increasingly powerful nocturnal emissions. But that's nothing compared to the Matahari levels of seduction Nakari can accomplish on his own. I mean, despite looking like a purple hairless goat lizard, before a battle, Nakari can sashay out between the two armies, wiggling their hips like Shakira to seduce enemy troops to change sides with Slaneshi favor. But the more powerful the unit, the more favor and effort Nakari has to put into that pole dance. After the battle is over, though, the converted units disappear from your army, slinking away in shame to try and wash the demonic taint and grundle from their lips. Defeating an enemy lord in battle or attempting hero actions against enemy characters has a chance of spreading the Gift of Slaanesh to them, a demonic Ganasifa herpes that causes them to secretly worship Slaanesh and gain devotees to your cause, all while spreading corruption so pink and feathery it could be marketed as a Barbie accessory. The usual tactic for a Total War game is to destroy everyone, friend and foe alike, but in this campaign, doing so would destroy these characters, so it's it's no coincidence that Nakari gets extra favor and more tribute from any vassals, and a diplomacy bonus with all factions to help accomplish this. And if that still isn't enough to convince anyone you meet that Slanesh is the best Chaos Waifu, anytime you complete a diplomatic action with a human, elf, or beastmen faction, you gain seductive influence over them making them more amenable to future deals. And when it maxes out, you can spend those devotees you've been earning to permanently vassalize these factions. Because when you're a sub to Nakari's OnlyFans, it's a permanent submission. Particularly Puritan factions may still require a cult of Slaanesh to grease them up for backdoor diplomacy. These cults automatically form in any province with high enough Slaaneshi corruption that you don't own. There, you can spend devotees like Little Blue Pills to further enhance your influence and, you guessed it, gain more devotees. Once you have a thousand devotees of Slaanesh, you can task them to spread the word of the Chaos God of Pleasure, effectively snowballing your campaign by passing Slaanesh from one mouth to the next without a drop spilt. Or if you'd like to take a more direct approach, 300 devotees can be sacrificed to summon a disciple army in a province with high corruption, encouraging followers of Slaanesh to strap on their best testicle clamps and join the pile. 
Disciple armies can't recruit new units or replenish their losses, but they are useful when you need a 983rd pair of hands to work the shaft of your battering ram. The technology research and upgrades available to Nakari's faction are exactly as shallow as you would expect, but what it lacks in girth it makes up for in length. Just don't expect to be able to take it all in one campaign, as Nakari is more interested in paddling with books than reading them. But as long as you can keep it up, your corruption will spread enough that every battle will begin elbow deep in a pink bush with a matching curtain of fuchsia skies. So become the perverse purveyor of pugilistic punishment. Summon Nakari to the mortal realms and show all those jumped up high elves what happens when anyone forgets their safe word around a champion of Slanesh. It's time to bring the world to its knees. And then the real fun begins. Because this has been a noob's guide to Nakari. Thanks for watching.